Hello and welcome to Zcast. I'm Zias Caravalla and I'm your host as usual. And I'm here today in person at Aruba Atmosphere. Uh, and I'm joined by Sylvia Hooks, the CMO of Aruba Networks, an HPE company. Uh, Sylvia, it's great to be back in Isn't person it? at Atmosphere. Oh my gosh, This so is an great. event that's largely three years in the making now. Yes, no, it's true. We've, we have three years of excitement packed into this one event because we had to do it virtually for two years. So we're so excited to be here and, and excited to have you with us. Yeah, so we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about network as a service, some innovation. Before we get started though, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to eWeek, my media partner. All Zcasts are done in conjunction with the eWeek eSpeaks program. Uh, now, Sylvia, this is my, I was just, we were talking uh, before the recording about this. I think this might be my 10th or 11th atmosphere. I always find it a great event. It's filled with innovation. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about Atmosphere and what it's all about? Yeah, we started Atmosphere, actually it started out as an Airheads conference only, right? So in the old days it was really technical people meeting locally. But it grew in popularity and we added in our, our partners as well, the partner business people in addition to the Airheads. And then we added in an IT executive forum and then media started coming. So it grew into a bigger conference that we now call Atmosphere. And it is our biggest event of the year, but also it drives our strategy, our planning, our visuals, like a lot, a lot of centers around atmosphere. It's the biggest thing we do. Yeah, well, there's a lot of energy here. There's about, I think, 3,000 people here or so this year. That, we had, we had 3,000 uh, people here, but then also a lot of people online, too. So yeah. we had 8,000 people register And online. I wasn't sure how the attendance would be like if people were coming back from a conference, but I can tell you, people want to come back, and that's great to see. <laughs> I know. In fact, when we were recruiting people, we wanted them to come. We found that everybody wanted to, but sometimes companies still have policies where they don't yeah. let people travel. So that was kind of the gating factor. Yeah, so I noticed the tagline for the event is making connections anywhere. And that was brought up a couple times in the keynote, but uh, tell us what exactly is that about? Why that tagline and what it means today? Yeah, so in addition to being a networking company where our job is to connect people and things securely, we noticed that we all were feeling like we needed to reconnect physically as humans, right? So we sort of put two and two together and decided, let's make this really about reconnecting as people, partners, customers, media, execs, everybody reconnecting, but also let's focus on the outcomes that we drive which is more about the connection than it is about the devices. Yeah, and I, I do I do like the, the, the theme of the event because I do think that one of the things we learned in the last couple of years is connections are really important. <laughs> I think for all of us that, that maybe we didn't need them or whatever, uh, the, the ability to be able to connect even digitally, right, when we're socially distanced became very important. So, uh, you know, congrats on, on coming up with that idea. Now, I know one of the big announcements here, and it was actually announced last week and then reiterated this week, uh, was your network as a service offering. Now, network as a service is one of those terms, frankly, that the industry tends to overuse, but everyone's got a NAS offering. So uh, before we get into what you specifically announced, uh, what's your definition of network as a service? Network as a service is hardware, software, services, delivered modularly, delivered in a recurring annual subscription or monthly subscription. Um, to, dr to drive an outcome, right? It's designed to be very easy to consume and for the customers to uh, take their focus off of the buying, the deployment, take it off of the, uh, the technology and focus on what they can do for their business. That said, we've done surveys that show no one really knows what this means, right? So people actually think they already have network as a service. So we're guessing that probably means they're, they have SaaS, right? They have a software as a service. Yeah. Um, maybe it means they have 5G and that's working for them, you know? So um, there's a lot of different ways we could define it, but we're trying to define it as hardware, software, and support so that everything goes together. Yeah, so it's a true as a service offering. It's not just here's some hardware and I'll sell it to you as a subscription model. That's right. Yeah. So we do, we, we bundle in the services, um, so the, we bundle in the support, and um, it is designed to go, this latest offer is designed to go through our partners and they're doing their value added resale. So they're going to add on their own services. They're going to wrap it into their MSP practice. They're going to do deployment and assessment services so that the customer is really getting a better package and they can pay OPEX over a period of time. Yeah, so your announcement last week, and again, reiterated today, was specifically uh, HPE GreenLake now as part of the Aruba offering. So how does that work for customers? Okay, so the HPE GreenLake name applies to all of our as a service offerings from HPE and Aruba. 
So we have that, and we have the HPE GreenLake offer from two years ago, the, our first network as a service offer that was highly customized, very bespoke for each customer. This is, our latest offer is a network as a service, very standardized, very easy to consume, very designed to be simple for our partners. Now, in addition to that, we have changed the, the way that you log in and view Aruba Central. So Aruba Central is our cloud-based management, software as a service, and now you will log in through the HPE GreenLake cloud platform. And when you do that, you can log in and see compute and storage apps available to you as well. So if you have all three of those, you can log into each of them. Um, you also get a combined inventory. It's one place to go to view all of your HPE um, equipment and service contracts, right? So the, this, it's, it's confusing because it's one overarching name, but we have the platform piece and then we have the full services. So you can be a um, HPE GreenLake platform customer without having to do the whole subscription. So um, I should assume then, and I don't want to correct me if I'm wrong, that GreenLake will be a key part of Aruba strategy going forward then. I think you'll hear more and more from us about that. I think it is an area that we can differentiate. I think it's something unique that we offer. We have the financial services from HPE. We have the partners that we're going to double down on. We have the, the underlying Aruba ESP edge services platform that really differentiates and allows flexibility. And one unique offer that, we're, um, that we just announced last week was that you can flex down. So if you have a store that you're shuttering or if you're merging, you can actually um, send back that, um, that equipment, you can flex down. So that's unique, and I think we want to talk more and more about the value of network as a service because our surveys have shown up to 69% of people are interested in consuming that way. And of course, there's always hype cycles, but I think it's uh, such a huge percentage of people that are interested that we want to make sure that we're talking about it and leading the way. Yeah, well clearly what I like about it is you think of every part of IT has moved to that cloud economic model, that, that as a service model, except the network. Right. right. For whatever reason, we've lagged behind in that, and we've you know, kept that legacy model. So uh, it's good to see HPE using its sort of bigger influence to be able to drive that model into networking. And that, right. to me, you're right, that is a differentiator. I think it's going to be tough for other companies to replicate that because they don't have that sort of heritage of as a service. Right, and it's, it is complex. I mean, it, yes, we have the technology, but you have to figure out a lot of the business angles to be able to do it. Um, so I definitely think that if you haven't started, you're going to be far behind. Now you had mentioned partners, and I noticed there's quite a few partners here. Right? I managed yeah. to catch up with a few of them that I know myself. And um, uh, how are they feeling about uh, Green Lake and Aruba, and what does that mean for them? So th I think, um, our, first of all, there's 50% of the people here are partners, which did you know that? That's a lot. That is a lot. Right, yeah. so we're very careful when we talk to, when we talk to our audience, it's definitely half partners. And as I said, the, the offer that we're making on the network as a service that we announced last week is actually designed for partners. Um, and that's different than our, our competitors. We've seen our competitors kind of pull back from their partnerships and, and maybe take the NAS offer direct. Yeah. So our partners are very interested in getting involved, right? We, we want to give them the tools, the funding, the um, training, the technology so that they can build a recurring revenue stream. Um, and so I think they're, they're looking to us to explain what is this going to mean for their businesses and how can they work with us. So they're exploratory phase, I think, unless they're already an MSP, we do have an MSP program, and they're already down that path. I, I actually think at the end of the day, this transition that HP has made to GreenLake for Aruba will be one of the most important things you do for your partners. I, I think partners, when I talk to partners, they're looking for ways to engage their customers more, to be as uh, raise their level of strategic value to their customers, and to me, the as-a-service offering lets them go and help customers continually optimize. It helps them look at how they're consuming the products, make sure that they're the right size, right? And so I think yes. historically what happened with a network infrastructure is a partner would sell them something, say, I'll see you in five years of renewal time, you know, when it's time to upgrade, yeah. and they didn't really interact much, but now this gives them the opportunity, anyways, to create that constant drumbeat with their customers. I agree. So, so, and I think some partners will always do things the old way, but some partners are innovative and they want to do things the new way. 
Um, some partners have already gotten there, and this makes it easier for them to consume the Aruba services and resell them, Aruba um, hardware, software, and support, and then put their own services on and resell that. So um, I'm hoping actually at this show to get feedback from our partners about it, um, because I love to get that one-on-one -on -one feedback. And, and you know, you as a marketing person, you kind of have ideas about how your story is going to be received, but I really want to hear it back from the partners too. Yeah, well, I think at the end of the day, it'll be viewed positively. So Yay. now, one of the highlights of this event is always hearing from Aruba leadership, right? And it's always been a highlight of this event. And today you had your uh, president, Phil Mottram, on stage, mm -hmm. and he, and he he announced some new things as well. So uh, what, did, what did Phil announce on stage today? So he, announced, he recapped the NAS announcement, like you said. He also announced a new feature set called Aruba Net Conductor, Aruba Central Net Conductor. Um, and that is our next generation um, policy engine that really automates the definition of a policy and then we'll write the configurations for you and push them out into the, um, into the network, out to the devices for enforcement. It also can do this at very, very high scale. So we've definitely heard from our customers that they, we need to take our policy up a level. Um, we need to make it very simple to use. There's, uh, the great resignation is causing staffing shortages. Um, and the specialists that are there don't want to be caught in repetitive tasks doing VLAN configuration manually. So we are solving those problems and that's what Phil announced on number one. Number two, we have a new location feature that we are putting into our, our access points, which allows them to use GPS signals to um, triangulate and locate each other inside a building and on the earth, right? So it's a fixed point. Not all the APs have to be connected to GPS, which is always a problem when you're indoors, like in a space like this. Yeah. Um, so we are making it easier for the APs to, to locate themselves, this kind of self-mapping for the IT administrator. And then for the lines of business, they will have a, a highly accurate Wi-Fi system that, that also acts as a location platform. And it doesn't cost anymore. So it's kind of bringing it to the masses, making it more accurate, using the Wi-Fi platform to spawn a whole new generation of indoor GPS location applications. Yeah, so when I saw the net conductor announcement, I, I liked it, you know, as a, uh, before I was an analyst, I was actually a network engineer, so I was one of those engineers that spent a lot of time <laughs> doing VLAN configurations and a bunch of uh, updates. And my advice to network professionals is always, if you're doing things today that aren't strategic to your resume, don't do them, right? Find yeah. a way to automate them out of your job. Yeah. And and uh, I have noticed, and, and uh, I think what you're hearing from the Aruba customers, that, you know, uh, pre-pandemic, I'd say when I brought up the topic of automation to network engineers, they kind of got nervous. They felt it was going to maybe do away with their jobs. But today I'm not seeing that at all. I think you're right. This The pressure they're feeling from having everybody at home, the pressure they're feeling from having <laughs> moved everybody to these you know, high bandwidth video applications, the pressure they're feeling managing a, a hybrid workforce where instead of having 100 branches, they have 6,000 branches, micro branches. And they're right? managing from a branch, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that helps with their jobs. And so the, it, from a vision perspective, what role do you see uh, Aruba Central Net Conductor having in kind of the overall modernization of networks? That theme that you just picked up on is actually the theme of the, the announcements is about network modernization. So. Um, what we see is that people where they once feared for the human, like maybe it's a human replace. Automation is not a human replace, it's a human assist, and my gosh, do people need assistance right now, right? Because they, they have so much going on. And Net Conductor takes away that manual task. Um, it adds automation in a safe way, right? It makes suggestions for you, and it, it, it takes your policy idea and turns it into configurations. So I think that the ability, the necessity of doing that is, is forcing people to look at automation where they maybe they didn't before. And then once they have that in place, I think they can start to look at doing even more interesting things for the business. So hopefully it's kind of like a gateway drug, right? You know, once you have it in there, you see the power of it. And, and then our, our customers can look at how do they use their network to fuel the business. And that's what a big theme for us is the network driving the business. Yeah, one of the, uh, and actually I, I wrote about the announcement, and one of the things I brought up in my post was that uh, digital transformation, every company's going through that. If you look at the building blocks of digital transformation, what are they, the cloud, IoT, mobility, right, artificial intelligence, they're all network centric in, in a way. And so, uh, to me, I don't see how a company can become a digital organization without modernizing the network. <clears throat> and what you're doing with the centralized policy and configuration control 
um, you know, to me is, is the right way to do it. In fact, I think one of the customers set up on stage, right, that if they wanted to make a change in a network, it would take 600 man hours. Yeah. And now it takes five, and yeah. so uh, 600 man hours isn't, isn't exactly the definition of agile. No, you're not doing a lot else if that's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah in fact, even just, uh, uh, you know, with troubleshooting the network and, and being able to push out policy, that alone is, consumes hours and hours of network engineer time. So I, I really didn't like that announcement. Now, uh, let's get back to the, the new GPS features. Yes. Um, this is something businesses have been trying to create indoor location services for, uh, I don't know, for as long as we've had Wi-Fi. Yeah, but, I know, right. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't very accurate, right? So right. Uh, how does, what is what you're doing with the, the GPS? How does it improve that? Yeah. What's the accuracy now? Yeah, so I think, and, and you're right, we have been trying to do this forever, and to be fair, there are special proprietary systems that you can deploy that will give you highly accurate location indoors, right? So you can do that. The problem is it's, it's expensive, it's proprietary, it's complex, and you already have a network in place, it's a shame you're not using that. But because the APs know, they, they're measuring where client devices are, and they can triangulate and they can tell relative, you know, how far away you are. So they can say, I am 15 feet from you, Zeus, but I still don't know where I am in the world, right? So what we're doing is bringing the GPS coordinates intelligence into access points. So now they know where they are on the world and they can tell you where you are on the world because we're a fixed point. Now, you still have the problem of indoor GPS, right? Because if you have all sorts of indoor APs, you have the same problem that client devices do, which is GPS doesn't propagate that well through big enclosed spaces, right? But you don't have to have GPS get to every AP. You can have APs that are receiving a GPS signal and they will communicate with the other APs and then use the, the magic in the background to inform them where they are using the, the relative location. And so everybody ends up knowing where they are on the earth. Now you're using also something called Open Locate. Yes. Right, which is seems like it's a transition away from the traditional services. Uh, what's the future for Open Locate? How's that going to play? Into yeah. This? So we're working hard to have Open Locate um, become a, a a standard that everybody can use to develop location aware applications. So in addition to having a location available, people then need to consume it and use it in meaningful ways, right? They need to use it for mapping, use it for client device applications. So Open Locate is the way that client devices and application developers can consume the location information and make use of that for, for good business outcomes. Just to wrap up, uh, for, for the people here that are here live or for the people that are even watching it streamed, uh, what are some of the key takeaways you hope the, people, the audience takes away from Atmosphere this year? You know, I think this year is a, a transitional year for us because our, our founder, um, Kirti Maikote, left after 20 years um, and he, his CTO, Partha, also departed. So I think everybody's been waiting to see who is this Aruba now, right? So what I'm hoping they see is that the culture is bigger than any one person and we're all here innovating. We haven't lost our edge, pun intended. Um, and so I, I really hope they walk away with a, a, a belief in the innovation that we still have and a trust that we're the same Aruba that we were and we're headed for great things. Um, in addition to that, we are closer to HPE as a, um, you know, as a powerful backer, if you will, right? So we're getting the benefit out of the relationship with HPE. Uh, at the same time, we're continuing to innovate. Yeah, see, so that last point's the key, is the, uh, the, the increased closest to HPE. I, you know, as, uh, I love Kirti and Partha, they were great, you know, they drove a lot of innovation in this industry, but I always felt like Aruba and HPE were a little bit separate. You know, now it does seem like the two companies have come together, the Green Lake, is a great example of that. Yeah. And more and more, I think when companies run IT, it, they're, they're thinking less about you own this domain, you own this domain, you own this domain, right? And we have to run everything as kind of this integrated stack and that'll it allows Aruba and HPE to move in that direction. I, you're exactly right. And I think that the market has changed, right? Even in the past 12 months, I think yeah. the market has changed. So now there there is more of a need for these, these silos to converge, right? So when you log in, I was saying that you can get compute storage and networking all together. I don't know if two or three years ago, that seemed like a, a thing that we needed to do. 
no. right? And it really does now because the, all the lines are blurring and I think the domains are coming together. Yeah, well clearly the pandemic changed a lot of things in the business world. Uh, I think we often forget about how much it changed the IT industry, especially the job of the IT pro. It's, it, certainly, it certainly has gotten harder. Sure. Harder, but I think they're heroes finally, yeah. right? Instead of um, being concerned only when things break, it's like this this department is who gives you the link and allows you to get to your, to your applications, right? And, and they're the ones who give you remote access. And boy, did we become appreciative of that in February of 2020. Yeah, well, it's, it's, you know, it saved a lot of companies. Yeah, so, it really yeah. did. Well, Sylvia Hooks, uh, CMO of Aruba Networks and HBE Company, thanks for joining me on the Zcast. If you're watching this, please don't forget to click to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on my next Zcast. Thank you so much. Thanks.